Ed McGivern was born in 1874 and spent most of his adult life and shooting career in the Lewiston, Montana area. He was no Gary Cooper or John Wayne in appearance. In fact, he looked somewhat like W.C. Fields. He was five foot five of stocky build, ambidextrous, and kept himself in good physical condition. He died in 1957 at the age of 83. Due to self-training, endless practice, research, and perseverance, he made himself the foremost American handgunner during the period between World Wars I and II. An outdoor sign painter by profession, he was never sponsored by any arms or ammunition company. However, he gave numerous handgun shooting exhibitions as an independent act. Although famous for his trick and speed shooting, he was most proud of his contributions to law enforcement handgun shooting and police training techniques. He was the first man to fully explore the use of the revolver in long range shooting, quick draw, aerial shooting, double action shooting, shooting without sights and allied subjects. McGivern's book, Fast and Fancy Revolver Shooting, was published in 1938. It's a basic text found in the library of every serious handgunner, and it's been reprinted several times since his death. Fortunately, this recently discovered black and white film footage from the Walter Groff estate and another source has made possible this presentation. It was filmed during the 1930 to 1940 period, and along with the written word, it provides additional evidence as to why he was called the greatest handgun exhibition shooter who ever lived. McGivern experimented and shot with all types and makes of handguns. However, he mostly used Colt single actions and officer models, and Smith & Wesson hand ejector models in both K and N frames. He favored Smith & Wesson revolvers for most of his speed and aerial shooting. He considered the Smith & Wesson to have a more consistent and positive double action pull. Although he used some custom grips and adapters, he preferred factory grips for most of his shooting. He liked high partridge type front sights. Otherwise, he generally shot his Smith & Wesson revolvers as they came, out of the box, without any modifications. He derived his speed and skill from the expenditure of over two million rounds in practice, and not through any mechanical advantage. McGivern's favorite gun belts and holsters were made by the S.D. Myers Company of El Paso, Texas, the most famous maker of quality gun leather of the pre-World War II period. McGivern designed and constructed a number of his own electric timing devices. He used stopwatches that had been checked by the U.S. Bureau of Standards to check the accuracy of his machines. His book devotes a whole chapter to this subject. McGivern shooting double action at paper targets. Notice the concentration and how everything seems to be focused on the trigger finger and how he leans into the target until he's off balance and has to step forward. The following aerial shots are from bits of film footage taken at different periods of time. They illustrate a mastery of this type of shooting that no one else has been able to entirely duplicate. Drawing and hitting self-thrown clay balls in the air. Bending over, throwing a clay ball between his legs, turning and hitting. Hitting two clay balls thrown in the air at the same time with a revolver in each hand. Hitting a half-gallon tin can six times in the air before it lands on the ground. Although naturally right-handed, he's using his left hand to hit aerial targets in this shot. Shooting, laying on his back, and hitting aerial targets thrown at different angles. Hitting two clay targets in the air, double action. Ed McGivern hitting six clay balls thrown in the air when giving an exhibition at the Central Montana Fair on September 4th, 1931. McGivern thoroughly debunked the then prevalent notion that no one could hit anything by fanning. He was able to put five hits on a hand-sized target at ranges of up to 20 feet in less than one and a half seconds. McGivern firing a double-action Smith & Wesson revolver using Peter's factory loads at the incredible cyclic rate of 600 shots per minute. This machine gun type speed was only achieved after years of perseverance and practice.
McGivern cast his own tennis ball size hollow clay balls for aerial shooting. The card shows a series of 26 dime sized lead discs tossed into the air and hit with Peter's wad cutter ammunition from a Smith & Wesson 38 Special revolver. In his later years, McGivern became increasingly crippled by arthritis in his hands. However, he continued to be active in his experiments and research and gave shooting instruction to various individuals and organizations. His favorite pupil and protege was Walter Groth, a wealthy Philadelphian who as a result became very skilled with the revolver. Groth also helped him financially with his ammunition expenditures, research, photography, and writings. Groff, firing at a clay ball on a string being whirled by McGivern. This was a method of training for aerial shooting. There are 14 of McGivern's guns in the Museum of the National Rifle Association in Washington, D.C. A permanent display is maintained, and the comments on the plaque are a fitting tribute to a legendary shooter. From a youthful interest in firearms, he developed uncanny skill in combining speed with accuracy in handgun shooting. He reached his peak in performance after age 50 and was able to accomplish feats with firearms that have never been equaled. Not only did he use stationary targets, but a wide variety of aerial targets ranging from quarter-sized lead discs to clay shotgun targets thrown singly or in multiples. He could hit a tin can thrown in the air six times before it struck the ground and cut circular cards edgewise tossed in the air. Ed McGivern was endowed with unusually keen vision. He had reflexes that would make a cat envious. He was of small stature with proportionately small hands. This apparently posed no handicap. His accomplishments were recorded by electrical timing devices and authenticated by many reliable witnesses. The firearms in this display were graciously donated by Mrs. Walter Groff from her husband's estate through the kind offices of Mr. Henry M. Stewart. Walter Groff and Ed McGivern worked together in producing the most remarkable shooting exhibitions ever conducted in the United States. Ed McGivern, truly worthy of the title, The Fastest Gun. <laughs>